Hi everyone, my name is Amin Rai, and right now we're at GVE London headquarters where we've got the great opportunity to interview Injection. Now, those of you from West London, or even London itself, will know who this guy is. He is a member of the Shared Punjab, uh, which is in Southall. Now, today, we had the opportunity to spend a day with him, and already we have seen some extraordinary stuff. And now, we're gonna sit down, have a one-to-one, -one, and go through all the things that he's going through in a more in-depth manner, from stabbings, shootings, losing loved ones, he's gonna spill the beans, he's gonna tell us all. And um, I can already say it's gonna be a good one because we already spent a whole day with him and we have witnessed enough already. So stay tuned and watch this space. Let's go meet Injection Shep and Drop. Literally just pulled up in here and the whole car park just stopped to stare at him. Injection, what's happening, brother? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> nice motor, man. Got it nice and clean. Yeah. Let's jump in the car yeah. and then we go um, drive, yeah. go for a little drive and I'll ask some questions at you. Oh. I'll show you a lot. Obviously, this is obviously this is where I've been brought up. So um, there's a lot, a lot of memories around here where we're going to be going. I'll show you school I went to, um, you know, where I used to get into my bond bungay, um, everything, you know, so it's going to be pretty much, it's going to be the full whack. So don't get bored, yeah, there's going to be a lot of places, a lot of places with a lot of knowing that's going on. Uh, before my whole life, um, I've, I've, you know what, to be honest with you, I'm not going to lie to you, I've, I've worked from fucking, you name it, from day one. Yeah, from the age of 12, mm -hmm. just be working at home. Mm -hmm. uh, working, sorry, um, while most people were going, uh, partying, you know, with their mates, getting fucking smashed. You know, um, studying even, I was I was doing the opposite. You know, I was grafting, making sure that I was uh, not letting my parents um, think I'm a burden on them. I know no parent, no parent actually thinks that uh, their child is a burden. You know, yeah, but yeah, I just yeah. felt like you know my parents were working so hard. You know, they were. I want to give back. Yeah, of course. You know, my mum used to work three jobs, sometimes four jobs. My dad used to work in a foundry, you know. Um, with, you know, I used to see him come home, you know, and he used to have burn marks in his clothes, in his skin, you know, um, in, the, in his turban, you know, where the hot pouring metal, hot boiling metal has gone through his clothes. And, uh, you know, he, he was a grafter, my dad. You know, don't get me wrong, he, he a rumble, mate. That guy used to come home every weekend. Like, weekends was the time for him to smash Bundy up, yeah? He used to come home covered in blood. And, um, but my parents grafted, you know, and I, I didn't want to take the piss. I wanted to pay my own ways. And I started doing that from a young age. Yeah, just, just fucking, just started grafting, mate, you know? South of traffic, you know? You know what, you, you can't, you, you can't live in Southall, you can't fucking live without Southall. It's a joke, you know what I mean? I, like, think, I think what it is, if you're born in Southall, you can't, you can't go anywhere. It's hard, bro. I guess Everything as an as say, outsider, they have a different perspective. You yeah. know, to make a name down here, I'm not gonna lie to you, yeah? Yeah. But like every, every banda around here, a lot of the youngsters, yeah. um, they, they try and make a name. And to be honest with you, it's been going on like this for years, for years and years and years. Uh, as far as I can remember, you've always had a generation which is trying to make a name for themselves. When you say like a name, what does that mean? So, being Punjabi, yeah, mm. it's in our blood. You got that robe inside you. You know, you want to be alpha. Mm. You know, um, you want to be superior. Mm. And um, you know, there's always getting fucking drunk, getting to fucking fights and yeah. all that shit. Yeah? yeah, there's a lot of that all the time. Yeah. And um, but. The pride thing is a big thing. You know, they want to make a name. They, they want people to know who they are. So whether it's fucking selling drugs, whether it's getting into fights, um, it, it could be anything, you know? And uh, back in the days, it, 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 it was, I mean, don't get me wrong, it was hard, you know? Because it weren't about knives, it weren't about guns. It was all fist on fist. You know, it's fucking pure fucking power. And um, to make a name then, you know, it, it was 
it was hard. And to be honest with you, now it's even harder. It's so fucking hard, it's ridiculous because every fucker wants to be a fucker, a nutter. They, they, they carry guns, they carry blades. Every single bandha is on it now. So even back in the days, it was a hard bandha that had a name, yeah? yeah, yeah. Nowadays, and that it's, uh, it's, um, it's, it's uh, any old idiot. Any old idiot. So, so you don't have to be physically tough. You don't, you don't tough. have to be physically tough. Just Anyone could be a nutter if you've got yeah. a blade and you've got like more than 10, 15 people in your crew. Yeah. You know, um, you've got a, you, you, you got a strap, strap obviously meaning gun. Yeah. Um, you know, if you got all of that, you know, you're the fucking man, you know? So you can imagine to be established now in, in this time, it's a big thing, you understand? I'll, I'll fucking walk down the street and I'll tell you one thing, every single fucker that thinks he's a fucking hard nut will drop at his fucking feet. You know what I mean? They will drop on his fucking knees, yeah? You know what I mean? Because they, they, they will show respect, you know? Um, and, and it's hard to earn that fucking respect, especially now. Why is it so violent here? Like, why is why South is such a violent area? South was just it's like like I said, isn't it? It's the whole Punjabis, isn't it? Um, you know, being a Punjabi, and uh, you know, South there's a lot of them here. You know, and it's it's everyone. So I'm always curious. I know, I know London have its areas here about you know certain areas South yeah. London, East London. Over there, it's all about knives and guns. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, with up and here, around here still, these are one of the few places left yet where, you know, you can probably still get away with knowing, being known for having, for having a pair of balls. Yeah. Um, you know, someone that can, is a bit stand up. Um, but you know, like, going back on what I was talking about, I've, I've worked my whole life, you know, um, and I've had so many different jobs. I, I've worked from, I'm, I'm talking like newspaper rounds, I'm talking going on race courses, filling in holes where the horses are made with sand. No way. Yeah, on on two pound fifty an hour. No way. Yeah, um, you know, security working, doing security for uh, established actors and singers. Yeah. Um, you know, bodyguard work, yeah. um, driving work, working for Tesco's, um, driving lorries. Um, fucking, I worked on the railways before this. I was on the railways as an electrical engineer. You know, getting three hundred fifty pound a day for doing nothing. You know, you know, it's good. And then, um, and it was my pals that said to me, look, what are you gonna do this? You're gonna do this forever. You know, why don't you come into the property game? So yeah. I've gone in with them now and, and, and the, the one of my pals that I'm with now is Westways Constructions. Okay. And these guys, I'm telling you, man, they've, they've been there for me day one, really? day one. You've got um, a big team around you now. Big, got... big team, big yeah. team. That's a famous jewelry, isn't it? Is that Ramesh? No. Where are you going there now? You've got, um, Gold Souk, which is the main, main uh, jeweler here. All right, so guys, this is where we've been, well, this See is what? where I was brought up, yeah? Um, I was brought up around here. Yeah. Got south of Broadway. Back in the days, it was known for its gold. Um, it's now known for gold and, and food. I'm gonna take you to one of the places here. It's the best, probably the best gold shop in the whole of the UK. Um, you guys know Indians, especially when it comes to gold, it's all about Indian gold, you know? Um, and uh, this guy is located in Southall, you know? Um, and uh, the place is called Gold Souk, just so you know. Um, but he's the daddy, I'm gonna introduce you to him anyway now, so you have a little look, yeah? That's Bobby here, he's the main man here, yeah? I was just telling him, I said, look, I said, I have all the places in the pretty much the whole of the UK. Yeah. Every, you know that up and they all love the gold, innit? This is the place. This, this is, is what the we want to do. We want to be famous like you, Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. wish, bruv, I wish. What's happening anyway? All good, good, man. Huh. We got something for you, boss. What you got for me, bruv? Oh, this is one of those Salman Khan ones, innit? That's it. So you're our Salman Khan in London. <laughs> so we have to put that on for you, mate. As Mr. Salman Khan in London. Brother, what's yeah. the damage on this? It's a small present. Fucking always got lucky, bro. You know what? what I'll tell you, you what we're gonna do, yeah? Yeah. Tell me if you agree to this. Now, every single person that is gonna view this, most likely at one point of their life, they're gonna buy Indian gold, whether it's for a wedding or whether it's for a party or a birthday or anything like that, yeah? yeah. A newborn baby, yeah. they will buy gold, right? All right. So the best place to come is this place, right or wrong? Thank you. So not only is it the best gold, it's the cheapest gold than any other place around here. What if we make it even cheaper? How about that? You tell me, Joe. 10%? As long as it's not bullion. Not no bullion. bullion, as long as it's not bullion. As long as it's jewelry, yeah, they can give you up to 10%. If you put your injections name in there, then it That's makes it. a lot of difference. Mention my name? Yeah. 
You lot guys get 10% off. Mention his name and <laughs> my name is Bobby. Yeah, Those come and see Bobby. Yeah. And uh, you can't get better than that. You cannot get better than that. So you you guys think of it in this way. This is, that's a big thing now. On average, you're looking at what, 20 grand? Um, a wedding set for a wedding, yeah? Um, that's two grand knocked off. How many guys would do that? Peel yet a love. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, that's that's cool yet I love. Thank you, Joe. You know, mate, I'm the next Mr. Salman Khan now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, I'm going to show you lot now the rest of the board. We're going to go over a little uh, walk down, um, show you lot all the famous restaurants around here. Um, the Judas you guys have already seen. Show you lot where I was actually, uh, what school I went to, um, all the border bungee that I've got up to from pretty much day one. So let's have a little walk. Bobby? Thank you, sir. Enough love, yeah? Thanks for coming. He is the guy, one of the cheapest jewelers in the area. But he's knocked off an extra 10%. Now you tell me about how many people do that. Yeah, that's sick. That's really Do you understand good. what I'm saying? Yeah, that is, yeah. that is, that's called respect. Yeah, yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? I didn't have to do that. You want, I, I, you know, like when you're, when you've got a business, yeah, every penny counts. And to knock off something like two grand, which is an average purchase, which is what people do nowadays. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's a big thing. Um, he's quite well, well known around here, isn't he, Bobby? He is. He is. He's pretty much known all over, the, all yeah. over, the, all over the country. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? When you've got houses next door to Amida Bachchan on a beach in Mumbai, which is the most expensive strip. Yeah. in the whole of India, that says a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. You understand? Um, you've got the famous Moti Mahal here, Moti Mahal restaurant here. Um, I mean, I'm going to tell you a little story about this place, yeah? Yeah. I'm going to do a video for this, I'm going to do a video for this. I'm going to do a documentary, and I'm going to do a video for this. I'm going to do a video for this, and I'm going to do a video for this. Oh, okay. uh, Uncle knows me, you know when I come up, when I come out of prison, man, I was on uh, I was on day release and um, I come here and I said to him, I said, Uncle, I used to work here before. And um, he goes to me, uh, he goes to me, he goes, you know what? He goes, you know what you used to work? I said, yeah. I'm getting a lump in my throat just talking about it now, you know what I mean? But he goes, what you used to work here? I said, yeah. And uh, um, I said, yeah, I worked here as a little kid, you know, and uh, you know, this is my favorite place, a lot of memories here. And I said, I've come out of prison. He gave me a box of Makai. And he said to me, you know what? He goes, take it back. You just take it back for, the, for your friends. You understand? So I took a box of material back for my friends. Obviously, in prison, you can't take things back like that, you know? Mm -hmm. But obviously, I knew all the, the, the governors and, and the officers and all that there. So, yeah, the, these are 100%. I, I worked here, what, at the age of 14. Um, I used to pay for my own school uniform, even, you know, because I didn't want my parents forking out for anything, um, you know, while everyone else was studying at home, trying to go to college, trying to go to uni. My, my life was what, working at, at take, taking orders. Mm. You know, um, but yeah, top guy. <laughs> so you know what it is, it's very yeah. powerful. It's, um, there is a lot that goes on that people don't know. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of it goes on behind the scenes. Yeah. You've got to be able to um, know everyone and everything that's going on here for you to see it. Yeah. Like, you, I know all the junkies around here, yeah? I know who's a junkie, who's not. Yeah. Um, so when you see certain people walking down the street, and you think, oh, he's a junkie and he's going into a shop. You know, he's not going to buy anything. He's going to nick something. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, and that's the difference. Um, and that's why know. someone like you come along. Yeah. And that's why people have a lot of respect for you because- but I don't let, uh, listen. I, uh, you resolve things out. I am, where, whatever road I'm on, whether it's, it's my parents' road, yeah. or whether I'm walking down the street now. Yeah. If I've got someone that is shot in gear in front of me, yeah, I'd fucking break the cunt's jaw. I'll tell you straight. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like seeing that shit. Why are you so strong against like people selling drugs? You know what it is? It's just it's just gun, isn't it? You yeah. know, if you want to do that, yeah, do it, yeah, but do it behind closed doors. You know, yeah. um, you know, like everyone does it from their homes. You know, if you want to do it, get ring up your fucking junkie, fucking drug dealer. Tell him to come to your house and drop it off. Yeah. Why are you doing this shit in the streets mm. where people can see? You know, people, these kids, these youngsters that are growing up, they're seeing this, mm. and um, you know, they they think it's a norm. Do you think what, it's okay? What's the situation now in Southall? Do you feel like it's getting better with the drug situation? Or you reckon it's getting you know worse? What? A lot of it now is just happening behind closed doors now. Yeah. Um, nothing happens in front of me. You know, I don't like walking down the streets here because um, like, it's just, there's just too many idiots. I mean, you'll see it today. I guarantee you at some point today, we will kick off with someone. Mm. Um, just, there's just too many idiots. It's just full of fucking shit. Mm. You know, um, like you get people that know the crack. Yeah. That know who I am or, you know, and then you've got people that, um, they're from out of the areas. That's the thing with Southall, right? Yeah. Um, people come from all sorts. Yeah. Um, people come out of the areas, a lot of these guys from back home, uh, they don't really know. Because mm. you see what it is, is with the name Injection, yeah. everyone's heard of it, but no one really knows what I look like. Um, That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. So a lot of people just say your name. Blah, blah, blah. People come up to me and say <laughs> to me, 
threaten me that they're going to call me on me. <laughs> fucking people what? telling me, yeah, bub, listen, you know who I know? That's I know crazy. Injection. I'll forget you fucked up. And I'm like, well, yeah, okay. Ring yeah, him up. Call him up his then. number. <laughs> <laughs> I write it down to my people, my yeah, friends. Yeah. Same thing. It's a fucking joke. Malise, this is one of the <laughs> oldest clothes stores around. Um, it's been around for fucking years. Yeah. Years um, since I was a little kid. I don't know if you lot can see that one there, but it's the check dogs, yeah? Um, that's where we used to get all our school uniform. So I was at the age of 14. I used to go on there on my own and get my own measurement, uh, get my school uniform measured up, my ties, my blazers and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, instead of going in there with my parents. I mean, don't get me wrong, my parents would have never said to me that um, you pay for it. They would have always, you know, they would, they would have paid for it, but I would, I would do things without telling them, you know? Um, that's a good, good I remember, road. I remember at one point, um, I remember seeing tears in my mom's eyes when uh, she gave me spending money and I used to do this all the time. She used to give me spending money. Uh, I think it was £10 a week at the time. £10 a week for school dinners. Um, so you can buy chips and pies or whatever while you're at school. And I never used to eat anything at school. Um, purely so I could give my mum that money back at the end of the week. Wow. So I used to stay hungry. I used to eat something before I used to leave home in the morning. Um, I used to uh, stay hungry throughout the whole day at school. And then I'd come home. Uh, so then I'd go to work. And then from work, I'd come home. I'd eat my roti. And um, I'd give my mum that money at the end of the week and I'd be like, mum, yeah, here you go. And then she'd be like, what's this? And I'd be like, well, uh, um, it's been cool. They'd be giving free meals at school and stuff like that, you know? And after about two or three weeks, what I'd end up happening is she clocked on. And then she like, got a bit upset. she gave me a hug. She was just like, look, like, you know what I mean? It's just like, you don't need to do this, you know what I mean? But I felt I had to, you know, because my parents were working, working, working hard. You know, I didn't want to be a burden on them, you know? That's the way I've always been. And, I, and I, sometimes I think to myself, I want people, I want, I want the youth around it, I want them to see the same thing. I want them to grow up and respect and appreciate their family, not take the fucking piss. Nowadays, people are going to uni, they're going to uh, colleges and they're rinsing their parents out. You know, they're taking out st uh, student loans and all that. They're not studying, they're getting pissed every single day, doing drugs, doing coke, it's fucked. And then they still, and they've got that loan to pay off and they've come back with no fucking qualification. You know, so it is a bit of a piss there, but I want people to see that, you know, that at the end of the day, you know, family comes first. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to put your family first because what they're doing now for the next four or five years is very crucial while they're at, while they're at college and uni because that's going to fucking, that's going to lay out, that's going to plan the rest of their future. These first five years are important because if they're, if they're not done properly, the rest of your future is just fucked. You're going to be working in fucking McDonald's. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with working in McDonald's, but yeah, yeah. a lot of people, they work there out of choice. You know, I'm sure if someone wanted to work in an office in central London, they'd prefer that 100, on 100 grand a year. Um, but it is what it is. See, a lot of these businesses here, they're all pretty much family owned as well, aren't they? So yeah. passed on our generation, generation. A lot of the freeholds here, yeah. they are owned by Alpine, Punjabi. Yeah. Um, and what it is, is they have um, leased them on. Yeah. Uh, they've leased them on to... Uh, uh, a lot of uh, Afghani, Pape, they've uh, released them on to um, uh, Pakistanis. Loads of other communities that have come in, what they're doing is they're, they're leasing them, mm. you know, and they've got businesses here. But it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, an average property here in South of Broadway, how much do you reckon it is? I'll probably say about 350, 400? Grand. Yeah. How about three and a half mil? What? Yep. That. And that was a few years ago, so I don't know how much it is now. That's mad. <laughs> That's yeah, crazy. Isn't it? Yeah, there's a lot of money here. There's a, a lot, lot of wealth. Lot of money. I think what we get here yeah. is that a lot of people from Asians that are from all over the UK come yeah. to Southall to get what they want, don't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, not, it's not just people from Southall, it's all over the... Everywhere. People everywhere. coming from Bradford, Manchester. You can go yeah. Any, yeah, yeah. You get, everything you, you get everything you need here, don't you? Yeah. What was right. a, a young injection like? Was he? Uh, That's what I'm gonna tell you. So was he uh, was, a fierce guy? Was he a shy guy? Was he? I was um, an entrepreneur. I had a lot of a lot of, uh, a lot of anger, a lot of frustration yeah. inside me. You know. Yeah. Um, you see what it is? Is you know, like people, they respect the gypsies, the travelers. Yeah. Um, and the reason why that is, a lot of it is fear. Um, the reason why they have fear is because they can fight and they can have it, yeah? yeah. And because at a young age, their parents used to teach them how to fight 
I'm not talking doing boxing classes and shit like that. Mm. Um, I'm talking they'd have them have street fights with other kids in the neighborhood, you know? Mm. And um, with uh, myself, I've, I've had a pretty much a similar lifestyle. Yeah. Um, my own father used to, um, uh, he used to get me to fight my brother. He'd, uh, he'd, he'd lock the room and um, he'd get me to fight my brother. And my brother was uh, five years older than me. So you imagine um, from a young age, from even at the age of eight, nine, mm. all the way, uh, he'd we'd be doing this till the age of about, I think it was about 13, 14, I think it was. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I'd be fighting someone five years older than me, and that's a big age. So you imagine you're you're ten years old, yeah? You're still a kid. But why though? What, what what's the whole motive behind you it? You want to toughen it, us up? My dad, my dad was just he 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 was a ruthless man. He was he'd walk into the room. Is it because of what you've seen in South? Like what's been happening around here? Nah, he's just the way he is. My baba was exactly the same. Like my baba, I tell you one thing. Like when he used to get pissed, yeah, um, in the night times, yeah. And uh, he used to uh, he used to do the tatsan and all that, you know, which is the they do the sarangi and the, the small little drum thing that they play like this, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they, he used to do all of that, and um, him and uh, one of my other uncles. Um, you know what? When we walking around here, I can't believe how many people are just turning around looking at you, man. Bro, you know what it is? I don't like to. Um, Literally, I don't really like to walk down the Broadway. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, you won't you won't see me walking down the Broadway, right? Yeah. But. It, I try to avoid it as much as I can, but um, yeah. every time I do come out, it's crazy, man. I'll, get, I'll walk down the streets here, mm. I'll get people who want to take pictures with me. People that know me and people that don't want to know me, they still want to take pictures um, because they, f they think I look different. Um, I mean, I don't know how, yeah. but I'm a, I look in the mirror and I just, I just see myself, Yeah. you know? Um, but I think, it's, I think it's the aura, isn't it? Talking about the aura, going back about my dad. Yeah. So he was the same, you know, he'd walk in the room, and uh, everyone would just go silent, you yeah. know? He had that thing about him, he had that presence about him, you know? Mm. And um, he'd, he'd walk in the room and, and you just you just know, just to go quiet mm. and don't say anything, you know? And he, he was never violent towards us or anything. He was nothing like that, he'd, he'd never done that, you know? Mm. Um, he was always violent towards other people. But you know when you just know that person has that, he has that in him, yeah. you know? Like, I will never show violence um, when, I, when I go places and stuff, but I have that aura inside me, and I, I guess I take it from my dad. Um, so a lot of people just tend to kind of hush themselves, you know? Um, but going back on my baba, yeah. he and my, uh, my uncle, when they used to get together, they used to, they used to get drunk every night. And when they used to get drunk, people used to try to avoid crossing them. Um, I mean, they must have killed about 10 to 15 people. Seriously? Back in the days, everyone knew it. You're talking about back in Punjab? Yeah, yeah, back in Punjab. They just literally just fucking, they just blow their heads off, you know, um, with a double barrel. And uh, they were known for that, you know, they'd chop people up and just bury them, leave them lying there. Yeah. And, um, you know, they were crazy. So, you know, my dad, obviously, he's he's seen that, he's grown up in that, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, he, he's obviously taken it on board, you know? Um, then obviously I've, taking it on board from my dad, mm. you know, and it's a lot of things, a lot of the way I am, um, it's been exactly the same. Like, I, I, I will, my dad's exactly the same. We will never ever show force towards a woman. We'll never, we will sh never show that side to us, uh, uh, side of us mm. to a woman, mm. you know, um, uh, because we think it's an abuse of power, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, if you wanna, if you're a real bandha, you show it to a real bandha or you show it to a real bande. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Um, and, uh, you, you know, you've got no reason to show your power to a woman. Mm. A, a real lion, you know, um, won't abuse his power. Mm. But uh, that's pretty much it. This is the school that I went to. So what sort of uh, feelings do you get here when you walk past these gates? What sort Boy, of emotions? You know, so how old would you, know, you be? Is, what, what sort of age gap are we talking about? This is, I went here, I think it was around, uh, it was my high school, so this was, <laughs> it's all Asians. The open job is there. But it's, it's just, it feels like it's changed. Like, I don't know. Yeah. It's just, it's just weird. I, I haven't, it's the first time I've been here, you know, I live, I live, I live around here, you know? Yeah. I come here all the time, but this is the first time I've actually come here and I've actually looked at it like this, but. Um, what memory really sticks out for you? What, what one, one memory you have here? Honestly, it's disgust and being grateful at the same time. Um, yeah, I, th I think a, a, lot, a lot of it was disgust and being grateful. Disgust because the people that I went to school um, 
they were they were low lifes. They were idiots, and I felt so disgusted by them. You know, I used to bunk school like everyone else. They used to go down there in that park there, Southwell Park right there. Um, they used to go down there, sit in the park. Um, hiding from the teachers, drinking, smoking, the same people, the same time, drinking the same stuff. I used to bunk school and I used to go home and I used to train in the gym, in the house. You know, um, okay, fair enough, for the first couple of years, my training was wrong. I, I wasn't, nobody was there to direct me, but I, I done it. Yeah. You understand? Um, that's why I was discussing, but, you know, glad at the same time because, you know, I, I think that, um, it's these people that helped me decide um, to start going the route that I was. I, you know, I got involved with the Sheri Punjab. Um, you know, uh, I saw a lot of people here. They, they did not appreciate what their family was doing for them, what their, their parents were doing. You know, there was fight. We used to do fights here all the time. This place, this was the first place I ever, 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 ever lost a fight. I've never lost a fight only once. This was the place. Really? Um, don't get me wrong. I've had fights over the years mm. which have carried on and carried on, you know, but there's been no end. There was no final decision who won and who didn't. Mm. You understand? It was just one of those ones. But who was um, the people you fight? You said, you know, you always felt that like you were a bit different from everyone else going to the park just down here drinking, yeah. smoking and stuff. Oh, they were idiots. So you fighting other people that were just... No, just... a lot of it was other schools. So we used to get other schools coming in here. Um, you first, uh, really? First what, age 11, yeah, yeah, 16? It was, it was proper gang warfare, man. That's you mad. Know, like, um, Can imagine was, like teenagers just yeah, was already trying to... High school, dorm was high school, it was all gang warfare. And I, I'll, be, I'll be honest with you, there was another um, a crew, um, uh, Sunny, Sunny Sidhu, um, he had his crew and it, it was about a good, it was about a good handful of them, right? Yeah. And um, So Sunny Sidhu is someone... He's he's also a friend of ours, but um, he, he was, uh, him, his colleagues, there were... Um, they were done. I don't know if you um, remember a few years back, there was a Heathrow robbery is a good few million pounds. Yeah, we heard about it. And yeah. that was these lot. And um, But what it is, is like, you see with me, yeah. I, I take my hats off to anyone, you know, um, if they deserve it. You understand? I'm not one of those people that sit there selfish and think, oh, he's a cunt. Oh, oh he's made a name, but fuck him, he's a cunt. Nah, if you've earned the respect and you fucking get the respect, and I'll tell you one thing, fist on fist, um, them boys, they were fucking, they were good. Um, you know, um, always got fucking love for anyone that that is that has got a good heart. Um, but yeah, shall we uh, shall we head back now and I'll show you a few of the cool. bits and bobs as well. Yeah, yeah, let's go, man. You got that? <laughs> oh, we recorded it. <laughs> I'm fucking out of breath, bro.